Hey, thanks everybody for joining us. Let me tell you, you are about ready to have a rock and roll time on today's program with our guest. Guest is Zach from Wretched Watchmen. And Zach has an active online ministry focused on end times biblical prophecy and current news happening around the world. Uh, the Watchtower podcast uh, currently streams live Tuesdays and Saturdays at Pacific time on YouTube and on Rumble. And Zach, he also hosts Below the Surface right here on Friday mornings on Hope for Our Times on YouTube, the app, and everywhere else where we post it. And I know many of you are already tuning in to Zach's programs. And thank you, Zach, for joining me, man. We are going to have one heck of a time today. I know it because we are, and that's what you do. Thanks for having me on, Tom. It's always a pleasure to get together and talk about this stuff with you. So thank you. Oh, well, thanks for joining me. And also, I, I want to thank you just for um, your contribution now, having your own program on. I love it. Zach, I learned a lot. I mean, people watching, <laughs> you have a lot that's there, and it's so cool. <laughs> And uh, I, I just am totally engaged with all these things that you're doing. So, so thank you. Well, thank you for allowing me to do that. It's truly an honor and a privilege. I mean, I've been watching you for a long time and to be able to actually contribute is just, it's, I never thought I'd be here. I'm, I'm, I thank the Lord every day for the opportunity. So thank you. Well, it's cool. I have a lot to ask you today, Zach, and thank you. And so you have this uh, centralized ES, ESG and net zero assessments, Moody's, has launched a brand new credit rating system called Net Zero Assessments, or NZAs, that will centralize the ESG scores for all companies. So, Zach, I've been hearing that people are saying no more ESGs, companies are saying no more SGS, ESGs, but you are saying they are not going away, and we're going to get into that. I want to ask you about that. Also, you have this regarding biometrics and the Internet of Things, the World Economic Forum, continues to push advanced biometrics as AI continues to advance. Germany will impose mandatory biometric documents beginning May of 2025. I'm sure you've been following the news out of Australia. Australia, it looks like they are bringing down the digital ID. But also, what is Christian nationalism as we would define it? I know what the left defines us as Christian nationalists. But um, real Christian nationalism has its roots in the NAR, and uh, I would like to have a program with you talking about that. Okay, before we get all these tech things, what's going on in Australia, what's going on in Germany, and what we can expect right here in the United States of America, what's going on? Also, there was a, a tech uh, problem this morning. Did you hear about that? I did. Yeah, it was... Uh... Uh, it started with Facebook and Meta and Instagram, that whole thing, but it seemed like spread to things like T-Mobile and a bunch of other ones as well. Surprisingly enough, uh, Twitter didn't get hit on that. But um, yeah, it kind of just jumped up and down. YouTube was having problems for a few minutes as well. So I know a lot of people like to... to direct that towards like a cyber attack. Um, I tend to look at it in more of a, a way of, well, everybody's kind of working on the same thing. I think they, whenever you update your computer, you usually have to do to install those updates. You have to restart it. And so I think when it comes to these, this universal collective uh, internet of things system that they're trying to make, I think they're installing things through the back door and they have to shut things down for a few minutes. So I tend to think in a different direction than just cyber attack, like a lot of people. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, I was going to start somewhere else, but we're going to start right here. So, I mean, I have a ton <laughs> of questions to ask you uh, regarding of uh, the internet of things. So as we look, you know, I already mentioned Australia, what, what's going on with Germany, uh, the World Economic Forum continues to push advanced biometrics as AI continues its press forward. So you did some work on this not too long ago looking at that, but I wanna get into this. So what's going on with Germany? What's going on with the push of AI? And if, if so, was today uh, what happened? You say, okay, you got to shut everything down. You got to reboot, whatever. Do you think there's a possibility part of that? They're taking it to the next level, getting ready to install everything. What, what, just, what are your thoughts? 
I tend to think uh, in that direction that it is. So the Internet of Things, if people don't know what it is, it's the basically it's the the network that connects all your smart devices together, including the Internet of Bodies, which has to do with anything like, say, you have a smartphone in your pocket. That would be a part of the Internet of Bodies, but it's connecting to the Internet of Things. So it's a way to centralize track and and every item and every person out there. And so when we see things like the biometric uh, uh, digital IDs and everything coming with that, what you're doing is you're creating a database, a social profile of each person. And as you go through biometric scans or you use your digital ID, um, since we have cameras and microphones and stuff all over, that's part of the smart city initiative is to be able to constantly monitor. You're always on the grid. They're always tracking you in real time of what's going on. So you have now been connected to this internet of things where they can constantly watch over you. And so through AI, it allows them to shuffle through the information that they already have stored on you. So there's all the talk about all the that they're trying to build all over the world, these massive databases. Well, what they do is they're holding your social profile or, or a more advanced term is your digital twin, so to say, where they have every detail about you recorded and placed in this digital twin. And then they can kind of... Um, run simulations, they're constantly running simulations to be able to ter determine what your specific action would be during an event. And so you can go throughout history, specifically the 2020 event, you can see, you know, um, they were telling each individual person was going about this, this chaos that was going on. And so when we have digital IDs, it's going to be attached to your social profile. And then as you go and you use these things, it's going to continue to add that information to you, but at the same time, or, or to your social profile, but at the same time, it's going to be able to keep tabs on you at all times. And when you introduce the CBDC social credit score, then you're getting into the aspect of, well, now they're just controlling every aspect of your life. And so we're seeing more countries many now uh, where they're making all your your IDs and everything now biometric. They're just adding you to the Internet of Things from that. Adding you to the IoT, Internet of Things. What, what are your thoughts on what's coming up with Australia? Because, I mean, we look at Revelation chapter 13. We know it's just a matter of time where everybody will be tracked in real time. Um, I believe a, the combination of AI with quantum computing will make it real time available. Mm -hmm. So as we going on in Australia, I mean, everybody I know from Australia is telling me this is coming. They've been told it's coming and it's this ID tracking. Yeah, one of the one of the big things that I've I've warned about for a while is they have testing grounds for things and specifically the entire continent of Africa, they're always testing things. If you notice when it comes to the digital ID and the tracking, they were kind of the first ones to go along with it. You saw all these small little countries. It's a good way to get it under the radar because nobody's paying attention to, you know, countries that only have 50,000 people that, that live there. But those are the first countries that they were installing it. Sri Lanka was one of them uh, where they had the meltdown of the financial system when they and, but Australia is another one that they constantly do testing on. We saw that big time during 2020 when it came to um, something that else. stuff. Yeah. yeah, that stuff. And so we're seeing it move. It's moving from Africa into Australia, which tells us it's in the second phase of getting this online, which will then spread to other countries from there. So I always warn people, keep an eye on Africa. And then if you see what they're working on and it jumps to Australia, you know it's on its way to you. Okay. Well, as you look at Canada, is uh, you see the same thing coming to Canada much sooner possibly. I mean, I haven't heard about the tracking yet in Canada coming this have for Australia. Have you heard anything like that with Canada? We have a lot of Can Canadian viewers, by the way. Um, I haven't necessarily seen anything that points that it's going to be there sooner, um, but Canada is pretty quick on getting a lot of this stuff done, especially since they're going so heavily on the um, hate speech against the alphabet uh, movement and stuff. That real-time digital ID tracking is going to play heavily on that because then they're just going to be able to target people if they say anything that goes against that. So I would not be surprised if Canada introduces it first before, say, like us or other European countries. I'm going to ask you a question that's completely off of this paper, 
but you're from Texas, and um, I'm watching what's going on with the fires mm -hmm. and what's happening to the cattle industry. Um, I mean, I have my own thoughts. I'm going to talk about it on Wednesday, but I'm uh, curious because, I mean, I watch what happened with Lahaina. Mm -hmm. I still get texts from people all the time saying, hey, this is directed. What are those, those military weapons to start fires? What are the direct, I can't remember what they're called. Directed energy weapon. There you go. So you have that. So what are your, I mean, I, I'm curious. You live in Texas. You see what's going on. What do you, I mean, we watch what's going on on the border. The border in Texas is horrific. Mm. What are your thoughts about this? Or you, do you want to go on record or not? About what we have <laughs> oh, I, I have no problem stirring the pot. You know that. I usually do that on your channel. Um, it's, I don't know why necessarily. I, I mean, I, when it comes to the fires, obviously they're they're in spots where they're attacking infrastructure area, whether it's food or even I think there's some um, uh, uh, places that got um, surrounded as well by the fire. And so it seems Texas, they're kind of creating a doorway, so to say, into uh, connecting uh, America, uh, North America and Mexico um, area, which we understand that they're trying to eliminate the borders anyways they've been trying to get rid of the the mexico and canadian border and make it one giant thing so it seems like they're kind of opening up the door on that and i think the border crisis um plays a part on that too i uh view it in a different way because i've done a lot of digging on abbott um understanding i mean everybody knows he's a part of the the wef the world economic forum he's been a part of that um but he's also done backdoor deals with um uh, what, what's his name? Um, the guy from the Rothschild Bank. Um, he's done back deals with him. Uh, he's the same guy that bailed Trump out of out of bankruptcy as well. But also on that is Abbott. Uh, Abbott has been um, getting major financial uh, put, um, throwbacks from allowing illegals to enter into the uh, development. Um, in Texas, where it's just a massive, looks like a military camp of e uh, illegals. There's drug, drug trafficking going out of that as well. That's been a development that he's been getting money from as well. So it seems we're getting played on the border. And then when you start throwing in the fires, it looks like they're creating a doorway as well as attacking infrastructure and food as well because of the cattle. So I have lots of questions to ask you based on everything you just said. So let me just start here. We'll start with this one. Then I want to get into the cattle and the open doorway. You're saying with Abbott, then we are being played on the right and on the left. Yes, yes, I, I firmly believe that. Um, the things that I've seen some from Abbott, uh, a lot of people are saying, hey, he's standing up for the border. Well, why is he waiting until now, an election year, uh, to stand up for the border? That's a long time to just wait for that. On top of that, he's, again, been getting money from very Luciferian groups, as well as profiting off of the illegals coming through as well. And again, I always tend to go on predictive programming as well. There's a movie coming out called Civil War, um, which is coming out just, was it May? Is it coming out in May this year, I think? And out pretty soon, it, yeah. And it's just the timing of this. Again, we got to look at timing on some of this stuff as well. And it's just perfect timing. It caused chaos and maybe some interference of some type when it comes to elections and, and whatnot. Do you think we're looking at civil war? Do you think it's going to happen? I could be putting I, you on the spot, but I mean, you know, I'm, I'm curious as to your, I keep getting asked that question myself. Um, when it comes to, I, in how I read the Bible is America is not mentioned. And so that means that doesn't mean it's going to be absolutely destroyed, but I think there's going to be a to be lowered to a point of insignificance where it's not worth being mentioned. And so part of the chaos, I believe, could in fact be a civil war. So I'll put it in I'll put it in that term. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, there's so many different possibilities of what the elimination of America from the future could be. And mm -hmm. you look at that, and it is fascinating. I don't know if, um, when, when I think of civil war, are there enough people in this country that would be willing to engage in a civil war? How many does it really need to be? From what I understand, it was only like less than 5%. If you go back in history, and you look at how many people actually fought 
as compared to the general population. Then you look at what's happening in the borders and you find out, well, that's about how many people they're letting in with a Somali background, a Chinese national background, Islamic Jihad background. You start finding out all these radical men of military age that they are letting in, they may be the ones that are fighting on the left or for the left mm-hmm. against people on the right. And I mean, there's a, there's, I mean, I mean, I can't help but think the reason they are letting these types of people in is for the purpose of starting something like this. Whether, yeah, whether it's, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, whether it be terrorist bombs or, 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 or uh, w- whatever it may be, something is going on. And then I hear about training camps for military camps for these individuals. Listen, I, I mean, I look at the whole thing and go, it is, if people don't think it's, there's something going on, then I, I think something's the matter with you. You're not paying attention. Uh, we look at, you know, and the drug cartel is also in, guilty of this too. When you look at the fentanyl that uh, ultimately you look, you go, wait a minute, this is coming from China which mm-hmm. gets to the cartel, which comes across our border. Um, and then you have all these other different groups. And you look at the Mexican population, to me, is really being used as a puppet to manipulate for the border crisis. It's like a magician, hey, look at this over here, while all these other things are happening, and that's what is really going on. But the fentanyl problem, killing more people than anyone else, or more young people than anyone else, um, not to mention the, the just the drugs that do cause you to be a worthless person in society. And you start to go, okay, all of this is coming across the southern border. Yeah. Yeah. You're you're watching the the destruction of the country through means that again, I mean, they could be fighting for I, I tend to look at it as the the it's kind of a um whether it's a a planned attack where you're just letting in all these military guys and they're, and they're doing this or whether it's kind of a, a new UN army uh, type of deal where, Hey, we're going to provide for you and your family. Just go in. And when we tell you to do what we need you to do, you do it. Um, and another aspect of this too, that a lot of people aren't paying attention to is what's going on in Europe as well. Um, I understand America, we're getting flooded. Europe's got it worse than us. And I don't think a lot of people realize that. Um, Catholicism, which is the number one religion in Europe, is almost getting ready to get taken over Islam because of the amount of illegals that are getting over in Europe. So is this going to be a, a coordinated thing where both Europe and America start getting attacked by this? Or I, I don't know. But either way, what we're seeing is definitely the demolition, the controlled demolition of America by allowing this stuff to come in through drugs, through illegals, setting up a possible army, and and so on and so forth. So a civil war definitely could be, but I wouldn't necessarily call it a civil war if we're fighting an outside enemy, if, if you know what I mean. Uh, yes, I do know what you mean on that. <laughs> now, also with Canada, I hear that the intent by these globalists is to uh, make sure that they deliver another 35 million immigrants to Canada, which would match the population of Canadians there. So what do you do with that? Well, suddenly you completely flip Canada, completely flip Canada. And there's, you know, and you look at all of these different things going on. Okay, Uh, now back to the directed energy weapon. You look at the fires going on in Texas. the cattle that are being destroyed. What are your numbers of cattle that you're hearing are being destroyed? And I, I can't help but think it, is, it, it was intentional, these fires, and that, I mean, it, it, it isn't a coincidence also that they, these people at the top of the food chain keep telling us we're not allowed to eat meat. Mm-hmm. And we see these strange things that are happening. Yeah, yeah, the cattle with... This is something that we've been seeing for a while. So if you go back a couple of years, we, we've been kind of watching all of the food processing plants just randomly go up in flames. Mm-hmm. Um, more than average, we understand industrial accidents happen, not like the frequency that they've been doing in the past several years. Um, cattle, we I don't know if you heard about it, was it last year? I believe it was last year. Um, the the hundreds of thousands of cattle that just dropped dead from yeah. heat in Kansas. All, I want um, to ask you about that. I'm glad all at the same time. 
Yeah. Listen, I mean, I live in the heat, right? In the, and there's cattle that survive <laughs> in 120 degree heat. I know they do because I see them. Mm-hmm. And they always have. And, they, and they've survived in Kansas. Why would they all die at the, wasn't it like the exact same time? Yeah, yeah, they all just died, keeled over. So, it's uh, impossible. Was, farmer just walked by, and all of a sudden, oh, all the cattle are dead. It didn't make any sense. Plus, if you ask the local farmers, it actually wasn't any hotter than in the past. So why would they just randomly die? Then if you start looking into maybe some other things, you start noticing that there was a chemical plant nearby that uh, managed to have some leaks into the cattle field, which could definitely just annihilate them overnight like it did. Um, yeah, there's there's definitely some tampering of the food uh, that is happening when it comes to the cattle. So yeah, when it comes to the Texas stuff, especially hitting specific areas like infrastructure, fuel, and cattle, they're taking out specific things. So you look at the cattle in Texas, uh, I'm, I, I'm guessing, do you think directed energy weapons were used i mean at this point we're speculating but i mean i still look at at lahaina you know there's there's just way way too many unanswered questions it it definitely could be um i've seen some pictures and videos which i'm extremely skeptical now when it comes to anything that i see that's video or picture uh because of AI and other programs can do. It's not just AI. There's other programs that you can alter things and make it look absolutely real. So I can't verify any of that stuff, but apparently people are seeing these flashes of random green lasers all over America. And they apparently there's been a couple in the region of Texas about the same time that the fire started. So could it be a directed energy weapon? It definitely could be. And I know there's still some people who, um, don't believe that those exist well you can go and check out the i believe it's the air force they promoted a uh, directed energy weapon so they know we know that they have them so it could definitely be or it could just be the classic case of can of gas and and fire but i think it would still be on purpose it's not an accident it seems awfully strange to me all right so uh, I, let's move from there and i want to get to some of the other things we were going to talk about <laughs> so as we look at tracking, we look what's going on in Australia. Um, do you see uh, and what's coming? As you mentioned, Europe, Canada, it's coming, which ultimately means it's coming here. How how does somebody? How do you escape a system like that when suddenly you find yourselves in a case with banking, for example? Um, you no longer have your regular bank account. You have digital currency, and you you'll have your digital currency it'll be just fine as long as you have the correct what esg scores or uh, nza whatever yeah um i a lot of people don't like the answer i give when it comes to well how do we escape this how do we go uh, avoid it you can't um then we understand that we get the answer through scripture this system is going to happen um now am i sitting there saying the moment that they offer it up do you go and sign up for it i'm not saying that but we have to understand that these things are going to happen and so when it comes to how do you escape it a lot of people think well i'll just go live off the grid well talked about there's a program from IARPA, which is the intelligence uh, division of DARPA, called the Haystack program. And it's an AI program built specifically to monitor people in rural areas as well as in caves, which I kind of find that interesting because the scripture always talks about nobody will be able to hide even underground and whatnot. So they've got those programs that are there. So there's no way to escape it. And when they want to get rid of cash and go digital, I mean, pretty much everybody runs off of cards now anyways, digital banking. It's just not a CBDC. So the transition's going to happen. And so I always like to say, I, I don't don't panic about it. Don't fear. There's nothing to fear about it because everything that we see happening, God's in control of it can't make a move without his permission and i always i always put it this way prophecy we're given prophecy because it's already happened for god god sits above time and so these events have already happened for him he knows what's going to happen he's in full control of it he sees what's going to happen do you think he's just going to say hey christians my church until i come and get you you're just on your own he's not going to do that he's going to take care of us so when it comes to these things hold off as long as you can that's my my thing but eventually if they're going to make it mandatory 
They're going to have to play along, but again, don't fear about it. We understand our rescue is coming and God's in control. So, uh, it, but it's not the mark of the beast also until no. you get to that place. And I think that's where people misunderstand. They're thinking this is mark of the beast. No, it's, it's a weapon that's going to be used to manipulate the masses of, of people is what, mm -hmm. it, is what it really is. Like you can't buy or sell unless, and then eventually it's what's going to be added is unless you worship the beast image. And that takes it to yeah. the next step. And we aren't, we're not there yet. We don't have that yet. Um, no, no. Yeah, but absolutely we, not. But we very well are, uh, I mean, we're looking at digital currency, digital tracking, and it is coming everywhere we look. Um, you know, you've done a lot on the banking systems and the, the bankers that, that run everything. When you look at the economy and the people at the top of this, uh, the Rothschild family, you start following these things at the top and you realize, okay, this has been going on a long time, but this, is, it's, it, this plan's been out there. Mm -hmm. And what we are experiencing is the, we're, we're getting to, it, it's been building and building and building for a long, long, long time. But now we're starting to experience what their, what their goal was. Is that, you see yeah, that? It, this has been going on for a very long time. Um, it goes back further. I kind of pitted my camp in the, between like the 1850s and, and 1900s area. Cause that's where a lot of it started to come from because you started to see uh, Rothschilds, um, Rockefellers, Carnegie Endowment, Morgans, uh, Baruch. Some of these names people don't don't realize. These are the guys that really started keeping this going um, and getting this moving. And you saw a lot of them that were funded, like the Club of Rome, begin in a Rockefeller estate in Italy. A lot of people don't realize that, but they're just as a part of this as well. And that has to do with climate. That's where they established the whole climate uh, agenda. And they're using that. I mean, everything that we see, even financial, well, it's about the climate. It's like, well, how does that play a part in it? Well, that's, that is the one thing that is driving all of this throughout history and every move that they've been making um, has been to make this happen. And they're using climate uh, to get it done. So yeah, this is something that's been a long time in the making and we're starting to see it come alive. Now it's just, we're seeing it through technology now. And there's a whole other aspect of the religious side of that, which we don't have time to get into that. I don't think. Well, let me ask, well, let's just start getting there. I'm okay. kind of curious. The, relig <laughs> the religious side of this, I mean, I, I look, I, and I mentioned ESGs are not going away, although we keep hearing they're going away. They're not. They're, they're, the, but maybe that in the religious side, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Yeah. So we talk a lot about Revelation 17. Um, about the 10 Kings. And usually everybody just talks about the 10 Kings, but there's not a lot of talk about the woman who rides the beast in or rides the beast system in. She's the one that seduces these Kings, these rulers to do it. And so the question of how throughout all this time, again, I referenced, you know, 1850 and on, how is it all these people, these thousands of people throughout this history, they all kept to the same script to make sure that their goal has all been the same. Well, it's been because the seductress has seduced these powerful kings, these powerful leaders to create this beast system that we're seeing now, and she's writing it in, which eventually she'll get thrown off and, and the Antichrist will take his place. But that's, that's the driving force of this. So there is the spiritual aspect of this, and this is something that I really focus on because we're told that this is not a fight against flesh and blood, but it's against the spiritual. This is a spiritual war. And so everything that we see out there uh, from the leaders, the talking heads, the Klaus Schwab, Harari, and, and so on and so forth, how are they all not eating each other alive? I mean, these are powerful men. Obviously, they're going to want their due. How are they not eating their themselves because they've all been seduced for the same goal and they're going that direction, which answers the question of, well, are you saying every leader believes in the same religion in order to get this through? No, but that also doesn't mean that they haven't been seduced the outcome by the woman who rides the beast in order to get this done. And so that's why we see this happening. And so when we see the ESG and stuff, which a lot of people think, Hey, it's dying. There's some companies, well, we're abandoning this. We're not going to do this type of thing. Well, it's, 
it's just going in a more quiet place. So Moody's introduced their net zero assessment, which is, if you don't know Moody's, they they basically give credit reports and analytics for companies, for investors, uh, for these companies to choose where to invest their money and whatnot. And so what they did is they just moved it over into Moody's where now every corporation is going to have a, a scale between one to five if they're falling in line with the ESG and the net zero assessment. So basically what it looks like is companies themselves aren't going to be giving themselves credit reports. Moody's is going to be giving out credit reports, which means the companies don't have to promote it anymore. They just have to go along with the agenda in order to keep their investments going. And, and uh, on B Moody's is pretty much um, decisions are made on investing based on whatever it is Moody's says. So if yes. Moody's doesn't give you a good mark, then no matter how big your company is, you're going to be in trouble. And yeah. so you have to stay in with a good Moody rating. Moody's and S&P are the big ones. And I've I, when I talk about this, I specifically went back to the 2008 uh, finan financial crisis, which I believe is the trigger for the financial crisis that we're seeing today. You can actually go back and listen to Kissinger and Soros and even uh, Evelyn de Rothschild as well when they're talking about there is going to be a controlled demolition, a controlled de-dollarization with China being the engine that's going to lead it forward. Well, what have we been seeing all these years? A de-dollarization with China being the engine driving it forward, which you start getting into things like bricks and whatnot at that point. But Moody's was one of the main components of being told what ratings to give to the, the loans, the mortgages, the securities for the financial crisis that happened. So all these, these uh, uh, bankrupt loans, these uh, defaulted loans were put into packages, were given high ratings, even though they should have been low, in order to continue to drive it up so they can collapse it when the time was right. And now Moody's is leading the charge when it comes to ESG now. Interesting. Where do you see uh, China in the near future? China is in an even worse financial position than we are. A lot of people like to look at them as an economic super giant. They're actually in a worse condition than we are. Their youth are not working and their giant uh, realtor uh, product, uh, project development group, Evergrande, I've been watching it for the past three years now. They've been collapsed and then rebought, collapsed, rebought. Well, now the government said you're done and so now you're going to start seeing the contagion from Evergrande collapse spread all over uh, the world at this point so it's coming and China's in a worse spot than we are China's going to be leading this absolutely I've been trying to warn people don't keep your eyes on China for being this great big superpower in the last days I've mm -hmm. warned people for so long they are not and it's a misunderstanding of Revelation chapter 16 and Revelation chapter 9 and we are watching it happen and uh, not only that, they have serious problems with their own military at the top. There's people at the top of China's military that are not going along with the bosses in the mm -hmm. military. And in fact, some of them are the bosses that aren't going along with the other bosses. And uh, th they've got an insurrection going on in China's military. So at the same time, we have these Chinese nationals that are coming across our border that still work for the the bad club. And uh, so we get all of these dynamics. It's like you look at these different things, Zach, it's hard to believe that anybody can see this and think, well, this is normal. It's, it's not normal. It, it's anything but normal. And then you recently talked about this, about the, the increasing aggression against Christians and Jews. And I will say this, I'd like to hear your comments on this and where you see it going, because we know it does help us to get a more, uh, a better, uh, more exact uh, time frame of where we are in the last days. But Christians are now being separated by the left into two categories. The, their, what they term real Christians are those who go along with the government. Mm -hmm. the, the ones that are fake Christians are those who actually believe the Bible is real. Um, I, I've seen, I, I saw someone on MSNBC basically say this, um, the, the, the words were not fake Christian, but it was basically there's this group out there that thinks that uh, they're from God, and they're referring to Christians. 
but the real Christians are those who realize their rights come from elsewhere. And I'm looking and going, wow, so this is what they're talking about, but we're now being separated. You have the Joel Osteen type of Christians, and, and all of that, the, the, like, all, this all goes along with your shirt, and then you have those who actually believe in the Bible, but we are seeing an increased aggression against Christians and Jews. Definitely seeing it against Jews. It is coming, it's like, it is everywhere now. Every, so we, we start looking at this in the light of the last days. What are your, what are your thoughts on this? We were told it was going to happen. And um, yeah, the persecution is definitely here. We're seeing what's going on with the Jews all over the world, um, which is why we're seeing the flooding, the absolute flooding of Jews returning back to Israel, because they're realizing that's the only safe place we have. Um, and so that goes right along with scripture. We understand that, you know, Israel is going to call, call our people. And, and, and they're going home now, and we're seeing more and more persecution um, in Europe and um, uh, America about what's going on with uh, against synagogues, Jewish businesses. I actually just saw a video where there was a, a head guy of the Methodist Church who wrote and uh, uh, wrote the swastika on their Jewish neighbors' groceries when they were wow. uh, sitting by the door, and so yeah. That's wow. we're we're seeing the Laodicean church. We're seeing the false church in the numbers, and we're seeing that remnant church continue to decrease in numbers. And I don't think that's people leaving the remnant church. I think we're just seeing the veil being lifted, yeah. and the separation is happening of who's true and who is not. And so it's going to increase from here. When it comes to the church, uh, the numbers that I read was in the past, I think it was four years, four years or five years, it's increased, uh, the attacks on church have increased by 800%. Um, last year, it was low 200s or uh, high 100s of church attacks. And this year, it's above 400 already, or last year it was 400. And so it's going to only increase from here. People have been asking, when's the persecution of the church going to start happening in the United States? Stop asking the question because it's coming. Um, it's the, the the case of be careful what you wish for. We've been watching the persecution in other areas, you know, North Korea, China, Nigeria is one that I really pay attention to. They, they just behead Christians in the street um, and then put you into a ditch and a public ditch and just leave the bodies there to rot and smell over time. They don't even cover them. Um, and it's, it's all over the place that this is happening. So, it's going to get worse, but I always tell people you can't, you cannot be afraid to say the name of Jesus. You cannot be afraid to stand on, on the truth. Continue to speak the word. Don't be afraid of what they might threaten you to uh, threaten to do to you. Don't be afraid of what they will do to you. Uh, we've seen get cleared. We've seen people lose jobs and whatnot. Our reward is not here. Our reward is in heaven. So, and honestly, the biggest reward, I know a lot of people talk about the crowns you're going to get. My biggest reward is I just want to be given a hug by Jesus and go, good, well done, good and faithful servant. I think that's the biggest reward. So keep that in mind as this persecution increases. Stand for truth, no matter what they threaten or do to, do to you. Amen. Well done, good and faithful servant. Uh, I think of the words of Revelation chapter 12, uh, where they overcame him by the blood of the lamb, the word of Testimony, and they did not love their lives unto death. And that's a reminder for all of us today. Listen, our citizenship is in heaven. We're going to be going home. We, we need to remember that as we look forward uh, to everything. I, you know, just while you're talking, I couldn't help but think this past weekend I met all kinds of people from Canada with part of the Remnant Church, different parts of Canada, not coming down in a big group, but all of them telling me the same story over and over again. And... Um, and, and the emails I get, I get a lot of emails from people from Canada. It's the same thing. It's, it is the remnant church. It's only going to increase. Australia and New Zealand, we were there. We witnessed it firsthand. Um, and, and so we are watching it in the Western world. And the United States, listen, we're being mocked more and more. Uh, we're being scoffed at more and more. And also what is really, I see, driving things is those who are willing to stand up with Israel stand with Israel and recognize, no, God made a covenant with Abraham and this covenant forever. It's an everlasting covenant. And uh, we don't just uh, look and go, well, this person did something bad, therefore all Jews are bad. That's what they're doing um, on th this, this other side. They're, they become 
the anti-Semitism is increasing. What they forget about is all the bad Gentiles that are out there. And praise God that we are saved by grace through faith, not mm-hmm. of works. And we're not saved because we're wonderful people. And uh, and so we stand with Israel. We'll continue to stand with Israel. And I'm there next week. I'm excited. I get to do a tour there. Maybe one day, Zach, you could go with me. It'd be cool. Um, but we're all going to be there with Jesus for those who know the Lord. It's going to be great. Zach, you have any final closing thoughts for everybody? And again, you can find everybody, Zach Wretched Watchman, on his own program on YouTube, but also right here on Fridays with uh, uh, under Beneath the Surface. And it is fantastic. Everything Zach does is absolutely fantastic. Make sure that you like and share videos. And Zach, closing thoughts you have? Um, again, I like to just remind people... We are not given the spirit of fear. Uh, We are not to worry. We are not to doubt. Um, I always reference Matthew 18, where Jesus, you know, he picks up a child and sits him in the midst of the people and says, be like this child. And what does that mean? It means we are to have unwavering and unquestioning faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, just like a child has in their parent. They don't, they just, they trust their parent and we are to trust Jesus. So when these things happen, we're not promised things are going to be easy. It's going to be a smooth road thing. We're going to have a lot of troubles along the way. We can't have fear. We can't worry. We can't doubt. We just need to trust in the Lord. He has saved us. He has gotten this far. Why would he abandon us now? He's not going to. He's in full control. So keep your eyes on him and continue to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in order to give others the same hope that you have as well. That's what I always remind people. Amen. Thank you for that excellent reminder. And by the way, again, Zach, Wretched Watchman, his program here below the surface on Fridays and also every check out everything Zach has. And please, you know, it helps us out if you like, subscribe, and share the videos. Uh, really helps us out a lot. It's free to do all of those things. Share, subscribe. Uh, thank you, everybody. And uh, God bless you guys. And look forward to seeing you back here on Wednesday tomorrow.